Good morning. Good morning. We gather this morning on this, the feast of St. Peter and Paul, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. During our Mass today, we're asked to pray for Cynthia Beamond. Our entry antiphon. These are the ones who, living in the flesh, planted the church with their blood. They drank the chalice of the Lord and became the friends of God. Peter and Paul, who put them together as one feast? Over the years, there have been lots of theories and explanations some years ago for the tradition that they died on the same day, but scholarship disproved this. Both were Jews, but from very different backgrounds. One was a fisherman, the other a scholar. They probably would not have met if not for Christ. And without Christ, they would never have stepped onto the world stage. Jesus chose them both. And by celebrating the memory of these two great apostles and martyrs, we remember how valiantly they struggled to bring into one church and under one gospel those divided by different religions, different cultures. And we pray today, we pray that we may be as generous as they were. So we pause and we place ourselves in the hands of the Lord. Lord, just as you called Peter and Paul, you've called each of us to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You've called us, Lord, uniquely, by name. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, open our hearts now to your word and to the gift of yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We praise the Lord as we say, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to, to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles, Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, Grant, we pray, that your church may, in all things, follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. A favourite church in Rome is that of St. Peter in Chains. And today we hear how King Herod, having executed the Apostle James, the brother of John, and found his action pleased the temple authorities, thought he'd go one better and treat Peter likewise. 
And so he arrested him, had him put in chains. But the Lord had other plans for Peter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King, this was during the days of unleavened bread, and he put Peter in prison, assigning four squads of four soldiers each to guard him in turns. Herod meant to try Peter in public after the end of Passover week. All the time Peter was under guard and the, ch the church prayed to God for him unremittingly. On the night before Herod was to try him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with double chains, while guards kept watch at the main entrance to the prison. Then suddenly the angel of the Lord stood there and the cell was filled with light. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him. Get up, he said, hurry, and the chains fell from his hands. The angel then said, put on your belt and sandals. After he had done this, the angel next said, wrap your cloak round you and follow me. Peter followed him, but had no idea that what the angel did was all happening in reality. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed through two guard posts, one after the other, and reached the iron gate leading to the city. This opened of its own accord. They went through it and had walked the whole length of one street when suddenly the angel left him. It was only then that Peter came to himself. Now I know it's all true, he said. The Lord really did send his angel and has saved me from Herod and from all that the Jewish people were so certain would happen to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, from all my terrors, the Lord set me free. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord, my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. Glorify the Lord with me, together let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors, he set me free. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. Writing to Timothy, Paul recognizes that his martyrdom is imminent, and he regards it as an act of worship. The Lord had warned him at his conversion, and Paul rejoices in being free from all evil. He has been faithful, he's brought and been brought safely to God's kingdom. A reading <clears throat> from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. My life is already being poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me power, so that through me the whole message might be proclaimed for all the pagans to hear. And so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from all evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 You are Peter, 
and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he's John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But you, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Be seated, please. <clears throat> there are uh, portraits from the first and second century onwards of Peter the fisherman, the working class man. A square face, bald or with a tonsure, and a short curly beard. There are pictures too of Paul or Saul as he was, the Pharisee of the leading classes, educated. But there's a description of him, second century. A small man, bald, with a long nose, eyebrows that met, a long beard, deep-set eyes, and bandy-legged. But what do Peter and Paul mean to you and me today? Of all they've said and done, what stays with you? My dad identified with Peter. He was relaying the flagstones in the, the old-fashioned kitchen. And to get them level, he got a four-by-four, four, two-meter-long piece of wood, and he was pounding the flagstone to get it level. And as in the Beano comic, he hit his toe. Now, I cannot repeat what he said, but to my great delight, he swore at some length, and then immediately said, Lord, Save me or I perish. That's Peter walking on the water after he's been called by the Lord and then sinking. A young postgraduate female said, when I said, what does Peter mean to you? Big smile. I like Peter, she said. He keeps on making mistakes, putting his foot in it. For many of us, Peter is the one who stands at heaven's door with a big key in his hand. And I have a number of jokes which we cannot tell at this point. Paul, for a lot of the older ones, it's that their wedding service many years ago. I may have all the eloquence of the angels, but if I am without love, I'm a gong booming, a cymbal clashing, and for me, on my ordination card 50 years ago, and again on the Jubilee card that's still in a box, glory be to you, Lord, that your power working in whoever we're praying for now can do infinitely more 
than we can ask or imagine. Plus for me, he has a vast vision of Jesus risen, being Lord and God of the whole of creation, the whole universe, visible and invisible. What do these two, the main saints, what do they have in common? As somebody said to me, they're definitely human. Both of them, what they're like, can be found probably in your family, certainly in this church body and in the Augustinian body. Peter is impetuous, speaks before he thinks, big heart, foot in it. Straight after this gospel, within five lines, he's saying, Lord, this is not to happen to you, this, this suffering you're talking about, this is not to happen to you. Has the power gone to his head of the responsibility? Jesus turns on him and calls him Satan. Get behind me. Then at, later on in his life at the Last Supper, Jesus says he's going. Peter says, I'll follow you anywhere. I'll lay down my life for you. Pete, Jesus says, this very night, you'll deny me, de deny me three times. And Paul, very different, whether he's still rounding up the Christians to have them put to death or put in prison, or once he's converted, the way he drives himself on, drives himself on three times round the known world, helping people find Jesus Christ, whether he's flogged, stoned, in prison, and then when he gets back home, he's writing letters or making tents, driven by the work ethic. He can't stop. There's some of those in the church, in the friars, and in your own families. And both, they have this in common, above all. Two very different people, but both are chosen personally by Jesus. Both are abruptly plucked out of their chosen way of life by God to follow Jesus on to death. And what's more, when you read both their stories, they are rescued regularly, saved by Jesus. Paul comes out of shipwreck, out of imprisonments, and indeed, he is saved by Jesus from probably what is his besetting sin, pride, arrogance. He's left with a thorn in his flesh that keeps him humble. Peter's rescued. He's denied his Lord. He's deserted Jesus at the time of trial and even execution on the cross. Jesus is risen from the dead and twice, twice he says Simon so he's taking him back to his pre-conversion times Simon he says do you love me in the Greek and Peter replies twice Lord you know I care for you and then the third time in Greek not in the English, in the Greek, Jesus says, Simon Peter, do you even care for me? And poor Peter, stripped and having to face himself, says, Lord, you know everything. You know whether I care for you. And then Jesus says, for the first time in the gospel, he says to him, follow me. First time in John's gospel. Follow me. So he's, Peter is rescued and recommissioned as head of the church. The relevance to today, a former student, I've contacted her twice now, she did ask me to help her with her faith, 
so I send her questions before the next sermon. She happens to be completely blind as well. And uh, she emailed, she says, Peter denied Jesus out of fear for his own life. We deny Jesus out of fear of ridicule. She says, on social media, we share so much about ourselves, but not our faith. Which of us singles out ourselves and talks on social media of the role our Lord plays in our lives now? And then she adds a poignant thought. How many, how many in lockdown, whatever about the brave faces we put on, how many could have done with just one of us on social media sharing Jesus' words and his teachings? And let's end with where Simon starts as Peter the Rock. Who do you say I am? It's this question to Peter that creates faith inside Peter, creates insight, but only because the Father, in that instant of asking the question, opens the eyes of Peter's heart. And that answer he gives, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, creates Peter, Simon, as Peter the rock, the foundation stone of the church. Not primarily, I would say, in the sense of authority, but in the sense of the heart of our faith, not doctrines, not customs, not theological statements, Simple faith in Jesus. So from time to time, let us hear down through the years, let us hear Jesus asking each of us, especially on this feast day, who do you say I am? Then instead of rushing into learnt phrases, listen, wait, put together your answer, based on your experience of God in Jesus. And then we'll be better able to draw others to Jesus Christ because we too, not just Peter, have the keys to Jesus and to his kingdom here and now. We stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Imitating the two great saints whose feasts we celebrate today, we turn to the Lord in love and faith. We pray for the church in these difficult times of COVID-19. We pray for Pope Francis, the successor of St. Peter. We pray for all missionaries who strive to spread the good news of salvation, just as Peter and Paul did in the days of the infant church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As the shackles of coronavirus restrictions are loosened, we pray that people will behave responsibly and not put themselves or society and especially the NHS workers at risk of reinfection. Lord, hear us. Lord, be gracious, hear us. We continue to hear of migrants and refugees putting themselves in danger. We pray that they may find a place they can call home. And we pray for all the children and parents who are victims of the civil war in Yemen. May the United Nations appeal bring the faction leaders and their backers to a lasting peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We commend to the Lord those who have died recently. Marian Daniels, Carmen Henry, Joanna Beard, Dame Vera Lynn. We remember too those whose anniversaries occur. Cynthia Beamond, Rosalie Johnny, Veronica Angela Howell, John Dowling. We pray for them together as we say, may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And in the quiet of our hearts, we place our own prayers before the Lord. And we pray with and through Mary, as we say, Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, grace. The, Lord the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We bring all our prayers to you, God our Father, in the hope that we may be strengthened to bring your message of hope and peace to our world. And we ask you this, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Michael. And so we offer our gifts and our prayers. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us 
the bread of life. Blessed be God on bread. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And Lord, in this symbolic washing, cleanse us of our sins and our sinful ways. So let us pray that our prayers and our offerings may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord, Lord our Son, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his children. May the prayer of the Apostles, Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We blaze them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. So, each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world, they now share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the saints and angels, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If you like to follow at home, we pray Eucharistic prayer number two. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Church. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <clears throat> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And together we pray now, as Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And we pray for peace together as we say, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other, as whatever way we can, a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion antiphon. Peter said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. St. Augustine used to preach every day. And so this is one of his thoughts on today's feast. This day has been made holy by the martyrdom of the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul. I'm not here speaking of some unknown martyrs, for their faith has penetrated every land and their message has reached the ends of the earth. But those two were one. Although their martyrdom occurred on different days, they were one. Peter went first, Paul followed. We celebrate the feast day is made sacred for us by the blood of these apostles. Let us love their faith, their life, their trials, their passion, their profession, and their teaching. And let us pray. Grant us, Lord, who have been renewed by this Eucharist, so to live in the church that, persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be of one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. We go now in the love and the peace of the Lord. 
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.